Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Colin Bird, who's Executive Chairman at Extract Resources. How are you today, Colin? I'm very good, Zach. Thank you, Zach. How are you? First off, uh, with Bush Ranger, how are we doing on the grades? What's your um, assessment of that at the moment? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's pretty topical. Great. I think I'd start off by saying over the last 15 years, the average grade being worked dropped from 1.13% to 0.62. And of course, the reason for that is, is the big underground mines with a 2 3% grade, their history or being depleted. And the new, the new vogue is, well, it's not even mining, Zach, it's civil engineering. You move as much muck as you can, um, and it's got to be easy to process. And, of course, the lactam fold is easy to process. And, you know, you're talking about projects there of 20 million tonnes a year. These are big projects, 20 years, 20 million tonnes a year. So, really, you know, you can look at your 2%, but they're small operations generally. Underground mining as a technique is basically beginning to, to disappear there are a few block caves around the world, and of course they're very popular. And porphyries are generally these block caves. So in reality, do we make the grade at Racecourse, or do we make the grade? Just what the doctor ordered. Um, and we're moving towards that 400 million tonne. But there's no, no doubt about it. There's a direct correlation between grade and between size. And Zach, you've got to be able to make your 15 to 20 million tonne a year. And because of the capital investment, you've got to be able to make I would say 15 to 20 years. And that gives you your broad scale. I have a, I peeped at the bulletin board and I see that um, there's some comment about 1% or she don't make it. Well, quite frankly, you know, that that uh, not informed comment. The real, the reality is the average grade being worked around the world now is 0.62. And this company is digging down six or 700 meters to get at 0.42 in Chile. In Chile. So, you know, when we're talking porphyries, when we're talking sunshine mining, talking block cave, we're talking huge tonnages and low grades. That's the nature of the beast. So yes, on a grade basis, we've made the grade. Right. The other, uh, which is also maybe relevant in terms of uh, bulletin board chat, even though uh, one has to always take that with a pinch of salt, the letters AA, uh, Anglo-American. Uh, what's the situation on that? Well, as you know, that was a great uh, turning point to me. I and mean, when, when I, you know, when we, when I did the deal, and Anglo got a 80% buy-in, you can't second second guess um, other people's companies. But I wouldn't buy 80% of anything. You know, the, the majors work, and of course they got first option. And uh, let's park Anglo American and talk about business sense and business practice. But if I got an option on something and it looked like it was getting big, I'd be looking to basically not buy 80% of it. I'd be looking to buy 100% of it. And uh, I wouldn't want it to run away from me, Zach. So I guess that um, distancing oneself from the, um, from, from extract and distancing myself from AA Anglo-American, then um, as a pure business approach, if I was on the other side of the coin, I would be I would be looking at uh, getting in there earlier than later, and, and that of course should affect the price, um, because the more value what comes out of this project, the more successful holes we drill. There's no doubt about it, because you know the buyout says that this has got to be independently assessed, not what we think it's worth. It's not what Anglo think it's worth. Um, a consulting company would have to basically look at recent sales, would have to do net present value calculations. And two, 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 you know, um, two million tons of contained copper done by an independent, um, applying his net present values, his risk curves, um, would come to come out to be a tidy figure, I think. So um, uh, we're glad we've got them there. But of course, aiming at two million, to, uh, two million tons of contained copper, Anglo then have got their choice to to either proceed with the project, uh, proceed with the purchase, or alternatively say no, not for us. And then, of course, we open up the big, the big world, don't we? We we open up the big world who it would we, well be suitable to. I mean, Newcrest are very active in the area. Rio Tinto aren't trying to go under, underground, as we see in Mongolia. So, quite frankly, there's a lot of companies who would be interested in this project. 
But it's nice to have, uh, let's say, Anglo-American looking over your shoulder, um, checking your homework and everything else, checking that you're, what you're doing, and to have that option there. In, in a way, it's sort of better than a, a maybe a joint venture. It's, you have you are successful, then you would get your price from a multinational. As you say, that's that's nice to have them looking over our shoulder, and of course, we'll be as open with them as as, as possible. And you know, I think you touched on joint venture. You know. One often sees on the bulletin boards again in the papers and, and news articles and talking about dilution, right? The worst form of dilution is joint venture. You're giving something away. Let's say somebody offers you 20 million for 10%, 15%. You give it away. You get on their timetable. They spend money at their rate. But I remember in the not too distant past, getting involved with a top company who were agreed to spend in three years 12 million. The first 8 million went up in setting warehouses, buying cars, offices being appointed right, left and centre, PR company, you know, and actual money in the ground, Zach. That's what, that's the way you find things. I mean, you've got a little company like Extract spending 550,000, 600,000 on its overheads. Then every penny goes into the ground. And uh, the longer this company can stay independent, Zach, the more value we can bring out and the more our shareholders benefit. So we're not for joint venture. Boy, it would have to be a very, very attractive joint venture. And it would have to have optionality. And it would have to have a pre-agreed exit. Um, and it would have to make sure that the drilling was done in the next couple of years. Because um, from my from my perspective, independence brings out value optionality preserves and protects value and 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 that's that's you know my duty to the shareholders it really is put the news released out today which i think we've you know we haven't mentioned like is that terrible weather in in australia particularly in new, new south wales well it, it stood close to sydney um thursday and friday i think it was um saturday sunday we we really got the tail end of it we had quite a belting on monday quite a belting on Monday, which we which we survived, and um, we're expecting to be in at the weekend. The, the target is Thursday, but I'm not going to be that optimistic. I always get beat up for being too optimistic. So we'll certainly be drilling for the weekend, and I rather hope we'll be drilling for Thursday, Friday. And again, Zach, I don't know if you noticed, that at 297, uh, we've hit the porphyry. Now, this whole... Um, this all was supposed to hit around about 350, 400, so I'm happy again, you know, we've hit it earlier. If we we're going a little somewhat tangentially to the plunge, and so um, we pick up another 100, 130 meters. So number six is full of Eastern Promise, another one. So um happy to say that uh, our guys are all right, our machines are all right. Um, we're a bit waterlogged, but we're, we're back. We've got all six down to seven and we'll be back in business towards the weekend so and we're in the porphyry so uh, at the moment it's it's good news apart from the weather it's good excellent news apart from the weather and i'm sorry for the people that, that they, uh, they they describe it to me the geologists do as the hundred year storm effect they've never known anything quite like it before Right, so when, when you know that's the pattern, that's the pattern, isn't it? You know, yeah. we've had it in Zambia, it's gone now. Uh, still got it in Zambia. It's, you know, it's still raining in Zambia, but incredibly, incredibly changeable weather worldwide. Let's see how we go, Colin Bird, executive chairman at uh, Extract Resources. Thank you very much indeed. Always nice to talk to you, Zach. Thank you very much too. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.